Hi, folks. So with the sudden surge in solar, we we are, are seeing that a lot of the water heating is being neglected, and specifically solar water heating. Um, when you consider your electrical bill, 60% of that is going to be related to water heating. And while solar can do many things, it's not best practice to heat it with a solar system that's dedicated for electricity. So what are the options for solar geysers or solar water heating is actually the correct term. You've got two real options. You've got solar thermal, which is your typical solar geyser where you expose a fluid or a gas to the sunshine and through a process of some fashion, that heat is transferred into the geyser and generates heat within a geyser for usage. And the other option is, is generation of, of PV uh, or electricity through PV panels and supplying an amount of electricity to a geyser to heat the element up at a rate that's not quite 100% of what it should be. Now, that sounds quite complicated, but that PV heating or PV driven water heating is becoming more and more popular all the time. It does unfortunately present with a few challenges in that there are electronic components involved and with load shedding is probably going to become quite tricky in the future. Um, the basic rules of solar water heating in any fashion is what you want to use for tonight and tomorrow morning you must have in the sun today. And how do you size that? The rule is 50 liters per person per shower per day, 80 to 120 liters per person per bath per day and 20, 25 liters for the kitchen. So a household of four people all showering with a kitchen, you're looking at 225 liters of hot water. So you'd be looking at a 300 liter system. You'd be looking at a system for 300 liters uh, in order to save you sufficient money to make it worthwhile. Whether you go PV water heating or whether you go solar thermal, that's the size you need to heat your water. My personal preference is the typical route of going solar thermal heats your water a lot, a lot further. And you can also do things like pre-feed, which pre-feeding the, the, the existing geyser, which tends to bypass and, and sort of cheat the system, if you want to call it, and give you a little bit extra without having to go for that extra geyser. So when you start looking at solar water heating, you want to save for eight to 10 months of the year, you want to walk away with no electricity on your geyser whatsoever um, and not have to manage it or maintain it and just really leave it there to, to, to heat the water for free. Um, and any shortfall of the volumes that we discussed a few seconds ago is ultimately going to mean a shortfall, which is going to need to be topped up with electricity. So in summary, guys, if you're considering going solar, um, Sure, security of supply and the applying amount of electricity to your, to your house is important, but consider the savings. Look at your geyser, look at the possibilities of what you can do from a solar perspective, whether it's solar thermal or solar PV, and look at what the right, what would be suitable for your uh, dwelling or development, and consider that as the first step. By eliminating your geyser, you potentially put 40 to 50% of your electrical bill back in your pocket and let the sun do the work. Thanks for your time.